Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Lamar Townsend, and I am a psychic, an energy channeler, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. I would love to do a reading for you. Check out my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. Subscribe, follow me. Thank you for joining me on this video in my podcast. You can listen to my podcast on Apple, Spotify, and Google, and more. Also, be sure to follow me on my social media pages, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Vimeo. Lamar Townsend Tarot is my handle on all those platforms. This is the story about a young boy who found himself, who found his tribe amongst the spiritual community. And not just the physical people. Stick around and listen up. Lamar Townsend, that's me, was born on December 27th, 1991, at 9.18 p.m. in Loudoun County, Virginia. Specifically Leesburg, Virginia to be exact, the richest county in Virginia and in the nation. Now Loudoun County in Leesburg wasn't always like that kind of grown to become that but you could think of Loudoun County and Leesburg as a little Beverly Hills 2.0 I grew up in Leesburg Virginia my whole life born and raised went to elementary school high school middle school all in Leesburg Virginia so I lived a very sheltered life growing up Being born on December 27th, 1991 puts me on the cusp of being a Capricorn, but on the cusp of Sagittarius. Capricorn is the ruler of the 10th house, which is ruled by Saturn. It rules status in life, the father, your relationship with your father. It also rules your career, professional destiny, status in society. Saturn is... um, can be a tough planet. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter in the ninth house, which is about good luck, your education, higher education, higher learning, long distance travel, foreign affairs, your sense of open mindedness, learning different languages and cultures. My moon's in Libra, so I'm very sensitive, but I won't necessarily show it. My Mercury's in Sagittarius, my Mars in Sagittarius. So I'm very creative, I'm a thinker, and I've always been that way. I've always been one that thinks outside the box. I've also always been a loner. Aside from being a Capricorn Sun, I'm also Uranus in Capricorn, Neptune in Capricorn, North Node in Capricorn, Saturn in Aquarius. So it's safe to say that ever since I was a child, I've always kept to myself. The beauty about keeping to myself as a young child was that also I got to be in my own world and I got to create my own world. One fascinating thing I found as a young child was pictures and photos and how you could capture a moment in time in a photo and look back at it whenever you wanted to and always be able to pick up something new about it, something new in the photo, a new color, a new vibration, a new facial expression. And I think that was the start of not only my spiritual journey, but also the start of my artistic journey. You see, I never started out wanting to be a spiritualist, but it was always in the background of my life, as you'll come to find as we go on in this documentary. Art, creativity, self-expression has always been at the forefront of my life. 
but due to me having heavy Capricorn in my chart, my moon in Libra with this need to please people and be, to be accepted as a young child and as a person in general, it was tough being me. It was tough learning to be me. But the one thing I did have going for me was my creativity and self-expression. And as I got older, I was able to hone that. But it all started with photographs. And then as I got older, I started getting into taking photographs myself and getting into photography. I remember when I was young, around 15 in high school, I wanted to be an actor. My mom would take me on auditions. So it, I never started out as a spiritual person, per se. I did grow up in the church, though. Pentecostal, Pentecostal and Baptist, to be exact. Couple of that with being gay and growing up in an era where it wasn't as acceptable to be gay as it is now. We're talking the late 90s, early 2000s. And even though that was still a progressive time, technically in terms of where society once was prior to, it was still kind of a tough time to grow up, you know, as a coming of age, spiritual, young, black gay person. One thing that I appreciated about growing up in Leesburg, Virginia was the diversity. I grew up around all different types and races of people. When I was in elementary school, my neighbor was a lovely white woman. I forgot her name. I think her name was Rachel. Um, and she was my babysitter when I was out of school and my mom was working. Because, you see, I didn't grow up with parents who were, like, together. Like, they weren't married. <clears throat> when I grew up, uh, my mom had her own life and my dad has had his own life. My dad's side of the family is super religious. That's the Pentecostal side of the family. My mom's side of the family is Baptist, but not as religious. But, of course, Saturn being the heavy influencer not only in my life but my chart my father played a big role in my life for the good and the bad one of my earliest memories of my father is me at my father's friend's house I somehow found my way into my father's friend's room she was a female and I found her makeup and me being the creative child that I was, of course, I start playing in the makeup and I start, you know, putting on the makeup and my father finds me and of course he goes ballistic and he beats me. So bad to the point where my father's friend had to tell him, you know, to, to stop, you know, you're, you're like hurting him. What I realized as I got older is that Mentally, I forgot it, and I thought that it wasn't important, but spiritually and emotionally, that stuck with me. That was also one of my earliest moments of me realizing that I was gay. So, of course, as you get older, you grow up in a, you know, very religious family, as I did, um... And with moments like that, you're taught that being gay, being yourself is not accepted. It's not the right thing, quote unquote, to be or do. <clears throat> it's a tough upbringing. Now, religion and spirituality don't go hand in hand. But religion was a big part of me connecting closer to God. And of course, as I connected closer to God, I became more connected to my life purpose, which was to become who I am, a psychic, a tarot reader, an astrologer, 
But of course, this isn't, this isn't the end of my journey, right? So it all, the spiritual part of me, the artistic part of me started with, you know, young, you know, getting into photography, but the spiritual part of me started in the church. I remember being young, and I think my favorite part of church was, like, the music. And how, like, the music could really get people, like, it affected people in different ways. Of course, it made people shout and, you know, act all kind of, you know, Holy Ghost filled, as they would say, right? But it also, like, it made you sway. It made you move. It made you feel it. But the beautiful thing about that was that I didn't realize that my artistic side and my spiritual side were being fed in that moment through music, through music in the church. One of my favorite artists growing up was Yolanda Adams. My grandma always played Yolanda Adams. Also loved Kirk Franklin and a slew of other gospel artists. I remember going being in high school and spending time with my great grandfather, who I was blessed to spend time around. And I feel his spirit a lot, you know, every now and then, to be honest with you. Um, I remember going to Bible study. And I remember our church, once again, Leesburg is a very diverse place. We, you know, it was technically a black church, meaning there were a lot of black people that went to church, but there were there were a few white people that that went as well. And I remember there were there was this lovely older white couple, you know, that would go to the Bible study every every week as well. It was every Thursday, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed learning about the Bible, and even though I was like 15 amongst these older adults, Capricorn, you know, that Capricorn energy I had, I enjoyed being amongst older energy and being nurtured in that way <clears throat> and having my soul fed and learning about God and learning about the Bible. But of course, church has its politics. And I'll never forget there was one moment, um, actually a few moments, where it led me to leaving the church. Basically, I was bullied. Remember, music, music has always been a big part, you know, of my life as well. So, of course, naturally, as I got older and in my teen years, I became a little bit more confident, you know, and I decided to join a choir. And I had a blast being a part of the choir. So much so that I even got my cousin, who was my best friend. You know, at the time, I spent a lot of time with my cousin, you know. Family, you know, is, is, is very, very important to me. Um... She would come with me, you know, and we would do uh, the choir rehearsals together. It was very fun. But I remember feeling that I never fit in with the people in the choir, especially the guys. They were always making fun of me for my hair. I was growing my hair out at the time and my hair texture. Um, I guess you could say I don't have the normal you know, whatever you want to say, hair texture. I have a very kind of wavy hair texture. I guess what you would say in, in black culture is good hair. But of course, you know, I got picked on for that. I got picked on for being gay and feminine. And I remember there was one, there was one time, you know, in, in choir rehearsal where all I wanted to do was be in choir rehearsal and sing and enjoy being, you know, music and praying God and I remember the, the straight boys over there like making fun of me, you know, and like pointing at me and laughing. And I think I just it was just like, you know what, I'm sick of this. Like, and I don't think I ever went back. You know, I think me and my cousin were like, yeah, we don't want to go back. Like, you know, there's no point in going back when all we want to do is sing and have fun. <clears throat> but I was getting bullied once again for my sexuality and my femininity. But I was starting to gain my own power and starting to stick up for myself. I remember when I was 15, there was this older man. And Leesburg is a very quiet place, a very safe place. At least it was for me growing up. Um, and you were able to walk around as a teenager. But I remember um, walking on my own and being in Walmart on my own as a teenager. And there was this older 
white man, you know, who's really creepy and like, it was my first introduction into like, wow, like adults can be really kind of creepy and, you know, maybe the world isn't so safe. And But it was also my first introduction into what is this guy seeing in myself that like, I don't quite see. Because obviously the guy thought I was gay and he was hitting on me. But I wasn't quite comfortable with that part of myself yet. Going through high school. High school was rough. But once again, art was a big, 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 big focal point for me. I was taking drama classes. I was doing photography. Photography was a big thing for me in high school. So much so that a lot of my photographs would be showcased. Fast forward to college. You know, college is when you start finding yourself. You go through heartbreak and you go through all these different life lessons. But college is when I started to explore music. And I started making my own music, and I started getting even deeper into my creativity, and um, I got into <clears throat> poetry, and I combined my filmmaking, and I, you know, filmed videos for other people, and, um, you know, I did my own videos, and I started my YouTube channel in college, and, you know, a lot of the content, you know, you can still find on my YouTube channel that I made for my college years, even the music. But I was starting to find my creative voice. And I was starting to establish it. And I, by the time I got to my super senior year of college, because I changed my major, which added like an extra year. But nonetheless, by the time I got to my super senior year, I felt like my creative side was fully honed. But it's at my super senior years that I started to hone my spiritual side. I remember watching in college, you know, that last year, that last month of college can be so stressful because it's like you're, you're applying for jobs, you're going on interviews, you're getting rejected, you still have classes and finals to do. And I just remember needing some relief, some sort of clarity that everything would be okay. And I went to VCU, I graduated from Virginia Commonwealth University with a degree in mass communication, specifically majoring in creative advertising. But I was struggling with getting a job and I was like, you know, what is my next, you know, purpose in life? And I was watching a lot of tarot readers on YouTube. The main ones I were watching were Tracy Brown and House of Stars. And I noticed that like, I started to hone my skills and it took me back to my days in high school when one of the first ways I would read people is through their favorite colors. And I actually was a part of this Brandy Norwood, the singer message board. And, you know, I would have people give me their favorite colors and I would read them based on their favorite color and I would be pretty accurate. And all these, you know, things that are coming to me, you know, back in even in high school when I would read books on Sylvia Brown and you know, just casually, you know, watching John, John Edwards, you know, videos and topics. And then all started coming back to me that, wait, like, maybe I can do this too. So I picked up a pack of Oracle cards at the nearest metaphysical shop at my college, and I started reading for myself. And then I became a little bit more confident and I started reading and recording them and posting them on YouTube. And I started reading celebrities. And I started doing horoscopes. And much to my avail, I started getting views on YouTube. Now, the one thing that my dad taught me before he passed away in 2010 is how to run a business. My dad had a very successful barbershop for many years before he passed away. So based on the business savvy that he taught me, the business savvy with my mom, 
I realized if I'm getting views, more views than I've ever gotten on any video I've ever posted, then I need to keep going with this. <clears throat> and from that one tarot deck, I was able to build a YouTube channel. That was 2016, it's 2021 now, so how many years is that? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Five years later, just from that one tarot deck, I built a YouTube channel, you know, a following of 50,000 subscribers. I have almost a thousand subscriber followers on uh, TikTok. I have over 2,000 followers on Instagram. I'm almost at 100 followers on Twitch. It's amazing what life has led me to and what my journey has led me to. In terms of my sexuality, it's, it's interesting exploring the different facets of my sexuality and my femininity that I wasn't able to explore, that I wasn't comfortable exploring at a young age due to kind of the trauma I went through, the bullying I went through. So, it's interesting how life has led me to this. Even this documentary. It's weird to be sitting here talking about yourself and your life story. You know, I could have been anything. Like I said, Leesburg, Loudoun County is the richest nation in the in the in, in the United States, or at least it has been since 2017. The last I checked. So, listen, you know, I didn't grow up poor by any means. I would say, for me, I grew up middle class, upper middle class to middle class. Most of the time, upper upper middle class. By, by certain standards. But even then, you know, life hasn't been easy for me. I know maybe sometimes I make it seem easy, but you know, I have my own trauma, I have my own story to tell. And this is only the half of it. But it's amazing how from my young interest in photographs led me to an ability to create music and film videos and build a whole YouTube channel and market myself. An interest in church and religion led me to becoming a very powerful spiritualist and tarot reader and astrologer but really what I realized at the end all be all is that I was all was all leading to a quest of me finding myself and I'm so happy to have found myself and continuing to find myself through art through creativity and through spirituality I found my home I'm home. This is the story of a young boy who found himself amongst the spiritual community, both the seen and the unseen. Thank you for listening and watching. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, comment and share with your friends and family. And keep in touch with me on my social media. Love and light. And until the next one.